Hey y'all. So today we have a very, 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 very special guest. And I cannot wait to talk to her about all the goings on that's going on now. She is a special guest. Now, it's not often I say special guest, okay? <laughs> We're going to treat her as such. We're going to treat her like a special guest. She is in good hands over here. If y'all want to be nasty somewhere else, do that somewhere else. But we're going to get right on into this interview right after the intro. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. If this is your first time here, over here, we are the Night Owls. If you have not hit that subscribe button, I want you to go ahead and do that right now. This is a channel where I talk about celebrity news and gossip and give my opinion on trending stories. But just know, keep in mind that over here, this is an acquired taste, you know what I'm saying? This ain't for everybody, so you know, proceed with caution. But you know, hit, still hit that subscribe button. Anyways. <laughs> All right, so we have Janae, and I'm going to give her a brief introduction, but you guys um, will hear from her her own introduction. But I got introduced to Janae from being a member in Carbonation. We seen her love story with Solar play out. And then we seen the situation with Nature Boy where she was a victim and this whole case was brought about. Now that is my introduction to her, but I want her to introduce herself to you guys and give you guys her proper introduction. Thank you so much, Neek. First of all, I want to say thank you so much. Like, I am so happy to be on your platform right now. Like, I feel so good right now. Hi, everyone. Peace, love, and light to you all. Um, I'm Janae, <laughs> Janae Alexandria, and um, as formerly known as Natiri. And uh, I am a cult survivor and now author. And I cannot wait to get into this chat with you all. Okay, so we are going to brace ourselves into here slow. So what I do normally with most guests is kind of bring a couple of interactions that you had within the cult. You tell me how you felt in that moment. And then um, people could kind of see how you were in that situation. And then you can just elaborate on how you felt. So the first video that I'm going to pull up, and these are not in order of like when they happen i just pulled up a couple of things where i thought like they were kind of like key things to me so let me pull up the first video that i'm gonna pull up is a video where your sister your twin sister came to you and tried to give you um one of your checks and she wanted to be able to be like in your life and nature boy was kind of like having a fit about it so um let me pull that video up and then we will move from there okay all right so hold on which one is it wait why is it not showing up <laughs> oh wait no no hold on It's not showing. Oh, here we go. I'm like, it's not showing up on my tabs. Okay. <laughs> not in, I didn't opt in to be online, so. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, we record everything. Yeah, that's interesting. You're not on there. Huh? You're not, You're not on, on there, there, by the way. Oh, okay. I just see you in the yeah. general vicinity. It's not so I don't know what, what, what exactly the lens is looking at, so. Right. Yeah. It's just the sister. Okay. I got it. Oh yeah, I saw like with, with me it's like when we when people come to us, we don't really deal with their families and, and outside sources. We so, I mean, we just we you gotta dedicate yourself all the way to what we doing. We really they know that before they join us. That's that's our rule. Mm -hmm. You know I me, mean? that's that's just how we roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just that's just how it is. I chose this lifestyle. I told y'all about it. Y'all already know what it is. Like, I'm not. See, people could join us, mm -hmm. but we ain't. We we really. If they if, look for real, it's like this. If you support what we do, we'll have a 
problem with what you guys do. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have an issue with how anybody lives their life. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to say when it's like, I feel as if there's a connection between, if the connection is cut between me and my twin sister, someone that I can claim as family. I, I don't know and, about that. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm I, I'm just saying from that, that, from that moment, I know, sister. but the thing about it is she's with you now. And if you're yeah, my family, if decision. she's... If you know she's, I mean? that's family, if she's my family, you are also my family. Yeah, I don't want to see it as okay, we're different, but we are still now most a people part don't accept the same. Me. Most people don't accept I me. I accept people. you for who you I stay are. Dolo. I stay in my but, own world. I stay I stay to myself. You feel me? Most okay. people don't accept me. You feel what I'm saying? So with that being said, like I just stay to I stay dolo. Most people's family, they hear about me from the public. They don't know me from their own self. You feel me? For their own self, they don't get to know me. They know me from what the tabloids say, what the people say about this and that, all the negative things they got to say about me. So I stay dolo. When people come to me, I really don't interact with, with other people that they deal with unless they fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? Or deal with us. Excuse me. I don't know if you watch my journey, but people be snitching on me, calling the cops. Your head motivated by oh. the hair for the check. Yeah, that's saying, that's not outside people. Exactly. That's hers. That's exactly. Mine. So it, it is exactly what it looks like. Is no, what I'm saying. You're making it that way. No, I'm not. You just said you don't, you wouldn't come here because you don't deal with outside people, but you come here for business. But that's okay. her. That's, that's, that's fine. I'm not uh, opposing oh, that. I'm not objecting that that's her check. All I'm saying is it's clear that you don't come for outside yeah. people, but y'all come for business. That's it. And that's just it. All right. So I'm going to pause that right there. So basically, what's going on is your sister was trying to still be in your life while also um trying to give you your resources so tell me about that situation and how you felt in that moment um i felt confused in that moment um i'll tell you exactly what happened so uh me and nature boy and the wives we decide to go to conyers or where that that was conyers georgia at the time to pick up a check that i had got because my twin sister told me a check came in the mail so I told the leader of the cult, of course, and uh, he was just like, all right, let's go get it. And um, they weren't there at the time. So we just went and chilled at the river that I meditate like on a daily basis. I used to go to the forest and meditate in the river all the time. So we enjoyed the river. And then when they got there, it was a kind of a confrontation um, between him and my sister and my sister's uh, boyfriend. And um, basically she was just saying that, um, I could come for the money, but you know, when it comes down to visiting and everything like that, I couldn't come for just normal visits. And Nature Boy was just saying, yeah, you can come over, like basically telling my sister she can come over anytime. It's just that they don't deal with outside people. Um, I was confused on what to do at that moment because like I told my family where I was going and I told them what was good. And me and my twin sister, we, we text occasionally when I was in the cult, like we get text sometimes or whatever. I guess she had felt some type of way because I wasn't allowed to go to my nephew's first birthday when I was in the cult. So um, yeah, it, it just was a, it was a, it was a hard time at that time, but I just wanted to know about the situation and just, you know, that everybody stay in the realm of love and understanding. But um, yeah, it when dealing with the cult, they don't allow people to interact with their families. Excuse me if I get emotional because that was very confusing for me at that time. And um, I didn't know what to do, but the cult doesn't allow people to interact with their families unless they were giving some kind of financial stability in some type of way. And you know, a lot of the members were close with their families until joining. So I was just one of them. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, mm-hmm. So I know that it had to be very, very hard and being feel, feeling like, you know, I want to be on my purpose, but then also like, I also want to be around my family and things like that as well. So I can understand how, you know, coming between that cost, crossroad for yourself could have been very, very confusing and very, 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 very like, a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. So I'm going to go to the next um, clip. And these, like I said, they're in no particular order, but I believe this next clip, you were um, away from the group. So you left. 
and you did a, a video with Velvet and the other wives and you and Velvet kind of went head to head on live. So I am going to, oh, ooh, I didn't mean to stop my camera. All right. So I'm going to uh, post uh, this and let me know your thoughts. People who actually voted you out. And you, yeah, they love you. And you stand on your face with them. Y'all didn't appreciate it. I really appreciate, it. I really appreciate my energy. energy. So because you're continually attaching yourself to people that will not care about you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's why I had to leave, right? Because I couldn't talk no, about you. No, because you couldn't finish your demons. You couldn't take the chance. I'm going to take the truth. What's your truth? No, no, please tell the truth. What is the truth? Is, is that you're in your lower self. And I know, lower by, self. I know that by experience. Every time that I called you and I told you how I felt, you were trying to drag me to my lower self every single time. No, I was not I, at I all. had to look at it for what it was because oh at the day is spiritual rather than physical. You will see you, Nateri, you like makeup, you like nails, you like cars, you like Babylon. And so you want to go experience that. And that has nothing to do with us. What? But at the end of the day, you're going to be faced with yourself, your lower self, or, or your demons. You're going to be faced with that in your lower self too. And you're going to have to respond the same way. You can cover it up with makeup. You can cover it up with niggas. You can cover it up with whatever you want to, but you're going to face yourself. When you were here, when you were here, Right. You was you wanted to be with five guys. You was like, I want to be with him. I want to be with him. Before you got here, you wanted to be with other guys outside of carbonation. That has nothing to do with us here. You cannot be like, oh, my vagina started doing this. My vagina started Terry, you came here looking sick as fuck, bro. And that's just, what? What? <laughs> that's on some real shit. You was healing. Look at Zoe. The reason why you look like you look right now is because you healed a part of yourself when you was here. Before then, you was falling off. That's why you cut your locks. That's why you started getting skinny. That's why you started feeling like you had nowhere else to turn to, so you had to turn to the truth. All right, so I'm going to stop that right there. <laughs> it seems like... Even going back there, you and Velvet had this very, very, very tumultuous relationship of this power dynamic. And she was acting, in my opinion, like a baby nature boy. <laughs> um, can you tell me what, when that time period was, how you felt in that moment, and then elaborate? Absolutely. So I believe that time was around 2020. Uh, when I first left Carbonation. And uh, this was after we went live. We, as in me, Shaka, Azine, and Star, went did a live exposing Carbonation. And this was because they told me that her name was Nana G at the time. They told me that Velvet, Nana G, was surrounded by the cult members and beaten up in the middle of the circle. And ooh, just thinking about it, that that made me so angry and so upset with the cult and with Nature Boy and the whole just false perception that they were giving to the public that it made me want to speak up about it. So that was after that. And um, um, as I was speaking out because they were just going pretending like everything was normal and going back to regular scheduled program. And I was I was speaking out. They caught me speaking out and wanted to battle me, I guess. So um, I guess Nature Boy told the, the women to gather around and try to confront me on camera. And uh, I said, shit, let me get home and charge my phone and let me do it, you know, because I had no problem with doing so um, and addressing them. And um, with me and Velvet, me and Velvet had a relationship throughout the years. You know, we were friends and we were cool. And I didn't appreciate her, you know, lying on the camera. And yeah, I think she is kind of like a little nature boy, honestly. Uh, and you know, it's because she he has groomed her since the age of 19. So um, basically what happened is, you know, the queen of Carbon Nation basically was just handling her queen duties and business, trying to square up with another powerful goddess. So it's, it was just basically that. And um, I just wanted her to tell the truth, honestly. I wanted her to tell everyone that she's being abused over there. And she calls me all the time. She used to call me all the time and tell me that, you know, uh, Nature Boy turned on her. He's telling, they're telling her to leave. They're telling, telling her that she's a demon. And I'll just be like, well, you know, if you need to leave, leave. You know, um, me and Velvet were close like that. 
So um, that's the basic explanation for that time, I'll say. Okay. So this next time that I'm going to pull up, I don't know if this is before or after the exchange that you had with Velvet, but you pretty much go and you stand up to Nature Boy and you call him out on his BS and tell him that he was running the cult astray and he was not right in what he was doing. So let me pull up that video and then I'm going to just pull, you know, and then I'll probably pause for a second, just hear your story. But I just kind of want to, you know, share a couple of these videos as we, you know, build up. So, of course. Let's see. Why are you saying what's going on? What's what? Why am I saying what? My niggas so much. What's going on? Why you know, the New York and me. I'm you know I'm from New York, so I just come now. <laughs> Nateria, I did not want to do this in public. Why do we have to do this publicly? Why can't we talk like because it got out of hand, Baba? It got out of hand. You're not supposed to be doing that. You know you're supposed to read and be leading it better. You doing this? Obviously, something needs to give, right? I'm asking maybe, the question. Maybe what we, is going to change about you doing it the way you're doing it now? You went public. Dangerous? No, this is all people, people that you talk that, about okay. you're preaching to. No, this is no, 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 no. Not, this you is not cannot the mislead them no more. You have this to talk is, about these, are, these are stranger people. You're putting your personal business out there. You're putting our business out there when I was trying to stay private. So I'm asking you, how is talking to these strangers and telling them they're your business going to help you it's going to help the nation it's going to help the people so because whatever y'all going through whatever y'all going people. through love Listen, everybody someone our... else is going through something too and they need to know they don't need to be in part of that shit they don't need Terry, to do that anymore Terry, Terry, we're not recruiting people i never recruit people i never I'm, not recruit... talking about that. I'm talking about in the generations just people in general you're talking about when we Terry. go through stuff Terry, and we Terry. talk about it but you're not talking Terry. about it love you're not Terry. Terry. You're, 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 yes yes Have a simple question, please answer it. I already answered it. How is this helping carbonation or the people that might be affected by me and carbonation? Maybe something will spark something in there. Maybe it will no. spark, spark a change. That's spark, helping. Spark, spark what? People, you're not going to stop people from fucking with you. I'm, that's that's, how not, I know that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to heal, my nigga. I'm trying to heal. How are you trying to heal? In you the out first step to healing, you always talk about it. Okay, tell, me the problem. To, tell me what you're trying to do. You have to admit the problem that's going on in that group, seeing the problem that's going on with that group, Baba G, seeing, you know, seeing the problem, admitting the problem, and doing something about it. What do you think okay, that so problem, what is, what problem is that telling the public? Is, tell, tell me why the public needs to know my business. The public needs to know because you're false leading people. Is, is you're being a hypocrite. I'm not, I'm not, listen, listen, I'm not false leading anybody. Tell me. How I'm forced leading somebody, tell me. Okay, so first of all, you posted the whole uh, happy pictures with you and Nana G and everybody else there, happy pictures, ha ha. You're always talking about being vulnerable, about what happened there when you're beating her, when she's beating you, when y'all are throwing shit at each other. Like, that's not okay. Everybody you know. about that. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, listen, life, it's not a secret. They don't need to hold on to that. No, they don't need to. You're there. in a toxic relationship with Nana G and you think it's okay. And you okay. perpetuate okay. generational right. curses okay. and need to stop right. now. Okay. So, and what is the public gonna do about it? What's the public? They're gonna know about because sometimes. Okay, they know. They know now. They know exactly what to do with their Terry, life. They know, Terry. Because you're not they, telling them. You're not telling them. I, what to the Terry, do. You're the telling Terry. them to beat on their wife. You're Terry. telling them to beat on their shit. You're not doing the right thing. Terry, calm and if down. you were doing the right thing, calm if down. you were doing the right thing, I would have been there. I would have been there, but I'm not. Calm down, Terry. Now everyone knows that I'm in a toxic relationship with Nana. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Nateri, Nateri, the next time you come here, I'm just going to end the lock and you can talk to yourself. All right. So um, I'll pull that one down. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when was that around the same time that you had the live with uh, Velvet? That was the same day, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for that one... I was so upset with the whole idea of carbonation being the 
prime example of who we're supposed to be in this world, right? But we wasn't really embodying that. Um, I was so upset with him because he was showing one image to the public and then, you know, another thing was happening behind closed doors. And in Carbon Nation, we wanted to be the example for the generations, to break generational curses, to, um, you know, be in love and light, just to be upliftment and encouraging um, others, the Black people, to do right. And, sorry. It's okay. Um, you are so strong, so beautiful. I just want you to know that you, you are amazing. Um, you are strong. You are resilient. I think that you are so brave. And I am so proud of you. And so many of us are proud of you because you definitely stood up for yourself then. You stood up for yourself now. And I'm so very proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just fed up. I was tired of the the false image that Carbon Nation was trying to uphold. And I was trying to call it out so people would know what was going on to either have their own judgment and follow with it or, you know, leave it completely alone. Um, I And for that, that particular day, I was just so upset that Velvet got beat up. Like I was, I was devastated because that was like my soul sister to me, you know? So to hear that she got beat up badly bruised and no one did anything about it and it just keep going on. I was just fed up with everything. So that's what that was about. I wanted to show also that you can stand up for yourself. Cause a lot of people in carbon nation didn't have a voice. Right, um, right. I was one of the few that had a voice and um, it was diminished, of course, but uh, I wanted to show that you can, you know, stand up to your teacher. So mm -hmm. that's what it was. All right. So the next video that I have queued up is when he basically tricked you to come back and you had a major exit and he basically uh, said, you know what? We set her up. And we're going to bring her back through um... They're my media player. All right. Terry, tell me why you mad. Um, so I guess last night we had a meeting um, and uh, it was some information brought to my attention from that meeting um, about a private conversation that I didn't know about. And um, it made me upset because it's like, I, I had a, a belief and thought that I was in love with a person that- With a person? Well, we're, we're gonna just say names now. Yeah. yeah we, I thought I was in love with Solar um, because we would have private conversations through messages and everything like that. Come to find out, it was just like all the hopes. It was like for me to come here and he was told by Baba G to message me. So it made me feel heartbroken and foolish and stupid and I got mad. And at that point I was like, <laughs> like done, cause it's like, like no real nigga that really care about you and love you would be like, like it just made me feel like, like I feel stupid. And at this point, that's why I'm thinking like Baba G was like, yo, cut it out. Like, you know, wake up. It's just a fantasy because it always was, I guess. And I thought it was real in my mind because I would have dreamed about him. I would just, just fantasize about him all the time. And I couldn't take it anymore. So when I thought, you know, Baba G was real about, you know, bringing me here, like to be with Solar, all this other stuff, I'm like, yo, like, I, this is it, this is what I manifested. I come to figure out it wasn't like that at all. So um, I was hurt and I'm trying to like process it. I'm trying to do other things. I'm trying to clean, I'm trying to, you know, create so I can get my mind off of it. Talking back. Talking back. And I feel like I'm trying to channel this energy because it's like, it's I believe you type shit. So that's how I feel about it. 
and I'm not a victim. I know I did this myself, so I can't even point and blame nobody. You know, I did this myself. Yeah, I call in and talk to her, man. Call and talk to uh, the Terry, man. Yo, what up, Haitian Voodoo? Yeah, it was like it was like a setup. We set that ass up, baby. Yeah, 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 Voodoo. Run me up, Voodoo. I need that second box. Voodoo, put me on that second box, man. Uh, Baba. So you brought her there because she is a part of the Carbonation family, though, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. So y'all just I, with her, I, but y'all just I, I teaching her, her a lesson. I bought her here. This is why I bought her. Let me tell you how I bought her. This is what I bought. This is what I did. I bought her here to use her for content. Right. Basically, like, I knew she was already in love with Solar. So I was just like, you know what? Since she talked all that shit, told those lies about me, I'm going to use her for content. And what I did was, I said, you know what? Come through. I told Solar to message her, juice her up. Have her come through. So he started talking to her. She came through, and the, and the, um, the plan was to just use it for clout, and then tell her like it was a it was a uh, basically it was like basically it was supposed to be like aha it's a prank and then send her ass back to the crib. But um, it wound up being that I like I like I like I like her. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm just gonna keep her. So it was basically, am, huh? It was I think revenge. You, I mean, a lot Terry, of people like Terry, I like Nateri too. Like, I Terry like got her. my name on her ass. That's my, she's mine. She belonged to me. I realized I that really when she do. got here, like, she belonged to me. I don't know why, but I really do like I am you with you. Y'all energy just mesh for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. See, I fuck with her. I like her. That's why she's But she do need to get her mind I, right. If, if I didn't like her, she would have been like here temporarily and then um Solar and Zoko would have been like, hell no, and she would have left. Right. Basically, that's how I was gonna get rid of her. Basically, um Zoko was gonna be like, hell no, you ain't allowed to be in my multiple relationship, bitch, and try to and I was gonna actually try to have Zoka fight her, and it was gonna be like a thing. All right. So that is when he got you to come back after you left. He basically got Solar to pretend like he was interested. Elaborate on, on that. Um, so that's when they was in Puerto Rico, right? And uh, when he was in Puerto Rico, uh, when Solar was in Puerto Rico as well, um, we got in contact with each other again. And we found comfort in each other. And um, we started liking each other again and, you know, wanted to be with each other. And um, it was really nice, you know, because I think around that time, like um, two months prior, he had lost his child. So, um, and he wasn't with Zoka at the time when me and him started talking back again. So um, we started talking, yada, yada, yada. And um, um, then he, out of nowhere, Alihio places Solar and Soka back together. I don't know if anyone caught that live, but he places them back together. And um, it just caused a lot of confusion between me in my mind, but at the same breath, I felt like I still wanted to go. So basically what Alihio did was basically said, well, I had a dream that you and Solar are supposed to be with, you, with each other and uh, I want you to come back. So he books my ticket to come back to Puerto Rico and says that I can be in a polygamous relationship with him and Zoka. And I accepted it, you know, polygamy was no rodeo to me. I understood what polygamy was and I can get along with women. So uh, I was like, okay, sure. And I left everything. He told me not to tell, who this is emotional. He told me not to tell my twin sister that I was going. And it, it, it broke her heart to see that I was gone because I it was like basically I ran away and um so when I got to Puerto Rico uh when I got there it was just like he was telling me oh no you don't need to be with Solar you know being he Zoka doesn't want you to be with him be with me instead 
you know, so he was doing a whole lot of uh, manipulation to get me back there. And then when I got there, um, it was no solar anything. It was just a Dr. Bishop episode. Everyone remembers Dr. Bishop um, and basically embarrassing me and humiliating me saying, uh, no, you, you're not allowed to be with uh, Solar. Um, and the night prior, he, he, oh my God, it was just a whole mess. So um, basically that's what happened. I was upset about that because I, I wasn't so much people like to say I was obsessed with Solar. I wasn't obsessed with Solar. I was obsessed with the idea of um, having a twin flame. Because around that time, it was a spiritual awakening. Twin flames were coming together, or twin flame awakenings, and all this bull crap about twin flames. So I thought he was my twin flame for some odd reason. And um, so I obsessed with being with him because I felt as if twin flames are supposed to be together to um, do their mission here on earth. Um, so when he told me that, um, that he, there was never going to be a solar. There was never going to be any of that. And he tricked me. Ha ha. I was very upset, um, and angry at myself, you know, but you know, that was that. And, um, I was very weak and vulnerable and, um, very naive, very, very, very naive, um, around those times. Um, I really didn't have much guidance when it comes down to these things, you know, when it comes down to men and, you know, how they treat women and, you know, what, how you tell a narcissist from a good man, you know? So I was very easily manipulated and very tricked a lot. So that's, that's what happened then. And I'm glad that that's over with. And I know that I'm not in love with Solar. I'm very much in love. Hey, baby, if you're in this chat room right now, I love you. <laughs> and I love you, I love you, I love you. But I, I'm so glad that I'm not in that type of situation anymore because I know now that's not what I needed at all. Um, I know what I need now um, coming out of the naivety. So all in a nutshell, that's what happened. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to just start off with some of those videos off the rip so people could kind of try to see a certain you know, dynamic that was at play there, but I'm going to back you up a little bit and I'm going to pause the videos for a second. And normally I start out with asking anyone that I interview that was in carbonation, what drew you to carbonation and how did you even end up there? So we're going to, we're going to back up a little bit and then we're going to, you know, go from there. So mm -hmm. what was going through Janae's mind in what was happening in your life when you seen carbonation? Because I've seen a video where you said that you were attracted to carbonation even before solar. So what was it that attracted you to carbonation? And then we'll go from there. Uh, okay. So what attracted me? I apologize, Neek. I am also watching my baby. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And it looks like she just woke up. So if you can give me like two minutes, um, I will come back. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Babies okay. always come first. Okay, awesome. Just give me two minutes, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, babies always come first. All right. In the meantime, while she is away, um, let's see. Was there any other videos? I guess I could play a video in the meantime. This wasn't one that I was going to pull up for her, but it's just one that I had kind of like available. So, and I've seen somebody um, in the chat, a comment. Somebody said, was she forced to do this interview? Hold on. Where was that? Where was that comment at? Somebody said, was she forced to do this interview? Nobody that comes on my platform is forced to do anything okay i don't even feel like going um back to uh find it but let's let's make that clear nobody is forced to do any interviews everybody does their interviews on their own free will um but <laughs> that qu that question was kind of crazy i'm like was she forced to do the interview like what <laughs> like what? Where where do I do that at? Where do I do that at and why? 
what happened? <laughs> How do you feel? Were you forced to do the, the interview? I'm like, why would she be forced to do an interview? Right. That's so crazy. Like I'll ever be forced to do anything else ever again in my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. What was All the right. question? Uh, All what? right. So um, the question that I asked was when, okay, well, wait, I'll just play this real quick. Cause there was like a thing where you said that you were attracted to carbonation before. And then after this, we'll pause the video. So let me just play this video, list a little bit um, of this video. And then um, we'll just like stream line from there. Okay. You are, you knew me for, um, you knew Babaji for a long time. Yeah, I watched Paula G before I met someone. I saw someone. Yeah, but it, was, it wasn't enough motivation for you to move on your own. Had you moved for yourself, it wouldn't be about Paula G. It would be about joining forces. It would be about us against the world. Yep. It wouldn't be that's about us. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I, when I left, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, we're about, about to be us against the world. That's what it is. I'm about to. Join, I'm about to join God's army. That's how I look at it. That's what I call it. I said, I'm joining God's army. Literally. Exactly. Y'all signed up for the military. I'm joining God, God's army. I'm finding a war that most people don't even want to acknowledge. They can't even see. Exactly. Because okay. I know who I am. I know my purpose. I can't do anything else. Material, you only came here because of soul. Mm -hmm. Second time around. Okay. I'm not going to hide it. I was lying. So you're not here for the right reasons. I actually started to think last, not last time, but when you told me the other day, like, okay, well, if so is out of question, I'm still going to be here and work on myself. So that maybe. Well, the, like, well, that's only because of fear of um, yeah, Prince York and him true? doing something to maybe, you. How is that true? I definitely you, like, you fear because going because back to Atlanta because, Atlanta because of okay. what you said about Prince York. And that you feel that's endangered. Part of, that's a part of the reason, yeah. I, yeah, I you feel like you can't go back. I feel like I'm in danger if I go back, but at the same time, I'm at that point, I'm like, I can just go out. Anyway. Excuse me, what are you doing? Why are you jumping? All right, so I'm gonna pause it right there. But basically, I think I heard it the first time. You said that you came there the second time for solar but you were listening to them before that so yeah so basically your journey absolutely so basically um for the first time when i first got in contact with carbonation i well which was melanation at the time i saw that they were like living out in nature you know but they could doing their thing you know um getting in tune with the earth you know all that and being spiritual beings and with love and unity and oneness that it was dope it was dope to me you know i i liked it uh, i was a tree hugger myself so um uh, seeing a lot of other tree huggers get together as a collective and live together was awesome so that's what you know had me on the frequency i i guess that's what you would call it you know the thought frequency and the frequency family is what um people will call uh or carbonation will call the people that's you know on the same thought form mm -hmm. so uh i would just basically tune into their their teachings and live out their teachings i even went to thailand and lived there for five months and malaysia for a month just living out the knowledge and you know just being in tune with nature going out to the jungles you know living in the tropics you know that type of thing so yeah i joined carbonation the first time because I wanted to be with the community I watched for years. You know, these was people that I grown to love behind a camera. And they also know, knew about me as well because they would watch my journey in Thailand. Um, the second time I would say, because I when I left the first time, I was like, okay. But the second time I joined, that was for Solar to be with Solar. The third time it was to be with Solar. And I'm gonna be blunt, straight, honest, completely. That's what it was for. Okay. So once you went up until the third time was when you guys were in Atlanta? Yes. The third time was when they were in the Atlanta home. Yes. Okay. So um, you, you joined them in Puerto Rico and then you left and then you went back for the third time in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. So when you went back the third time, Solar kind of willed you in again for that time? 
or how did that go? So Solar at the time was in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, I believe. And um, the, at that home, it was just the men. But at the time, the women were over there. So um, around this time, I was um, I got in contact with him again. Well, he got in contact with me every single time. Um, and basically, we got back into talking and, you know, we found comfort in each other a lot. You know, we, we enjoy talking about the knowledge and, you know, a lot of other things. And he was telling me about how romantic he is and how much of a lover he is. And, and we were just talking about our charts and syn synchronicities and whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So um, basically I told him because um, Efru has also reached out to me uh, she was just like, yeah, I, I want you to come visit, you know, um, and this was around Christmas 2021, I believe, uh, or 2000, yeah, 2021, around that time. So um, she was just reaching out to me saying she wanted me to visit. And I was just like, oh, that's awesome, because I was thinking about, you know, going there anyway to ask uh, Alihio, Nature Boy, if I can go to his home in Philadelphia, because Solar would tell me that to be with him, I have to, um, where'd she go? Uh, to be with him, I had to- Oh, I'm still here. I just had, I'm, I'm in the background, but go uh, ahead, I'm still here. <laughs> to be with him, I had to get back in touch and get back on good terms with the tribe or the cult or with also with Nature Boy. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to sacrifice my pride and ego and go make amends with the leader. You know, of course, um, just right, to right. sacrifice and be with the one I loved at the time. So I was just like trying to show Solar that, you know, I'm willing to do the work required because he's always talking about do some type of work. So I was trying to show him that I'm willing to do it. Um, so I went back to the home in Atlanta and let me, let's just say it didn't even go the way that I thought it would go at all. He's sorry. He's so manipulative and it's, it's ridiculous that this man, Elihio Bishop, that's always trying to like reel me in. Um, I kind of got, after realizing everything and, and learning everything, it kind of scared me on, on how a much of a predator he actually is. Because um, I remember Kendra saying in one of her lives that, oh, he would send women out there to receive you, get you, you know, just be, if he wants you. You know, if he wants you, he's like, I want her, go get her, especially using Efru. And Efru was the one who reached out to me. So when I heard Kendra saying that, it scared me mm -hmm. because I swear to gosh, I was not thinking about ever being with Elihio ever. Even in that time when I did go to talk to him, he was trying to, he was literally coercing me for hours to have sex with him and sleep with him. And it was it was so exhausting and so tiring for me because it's like every time I try to be with another male, another man, he tries to dominate me and claim me as his. So, excuse me, but that's, that's basically what happened. Um, the third time I went back to ask if I can stay in his home in Pennsylvania um, but it didn't happen that way. So, okay. Yeah. So from Pennsylvania, you wanted to go there, but that didn't happen that way. How did you guys, um, all end up in Atlanta at Arbor Chase? Um, they were there before me. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I went to and tried to visit. It was supposed to be a visit, you know? So after, um, he basically was trying to you know, manipulate me and try to tell me like, oh, you should stay and all this other stuff. He basically coerces me to have sex with him and basically was trying to shame me for doing the act. Basically, it made me feel shameful. Bless you. Oh, shoot. Thank Bless you. Go ahead. Bless you. Basically, I felt shameful for being talked into it because- oh, I'm sorry to st stop you. So yeah. you get to Arbor Chase and you're only supposed to be there for a visit. Yeah. But once you get there, he talks you into sleeping with him. Yeah. He does. So how, how long from the time that you got there to the time that he gets you to sleep with him? 
hours. hours. Oh, and hours of you getting there? Yeah, like it was that same night. Like he's been trying to, he's been, he did that the last time, you know? So he definitely was um, basically trying to tell me, oh, uh, you came here to be with, to talk to me about Courtney and I'm like, uh, Solar. And I'm like, yeah, I want to be with him. I want to be with him in Pennsylvania. And he's like, well, you're the boss's chick. You're not no one but mine. You know, he's always claiming me because I have the tattoo on my ass. So excuse my language, but that's what he would say all the time. And, uh, how, how I belong to him and all the women belongs to him. And he would try to, say that, oh, he needs me, you know, he needs my beauty. He needs to show the world that, you know, a woman like me can be on the knowledge and, you know, getting into an insane, the knowledge and everything like that. So he would basically try to make it seem like whatever being with him or being over there, being with carbonation with, uh, with the other women was a powerful and wonderful thing. Of course, me, I'm just like, no, nah, I really just want to be with uh, Courtney. But when he coerces me to have sex with him and sleep with him, uh, I'm telling you, it was hours and I'm hours upon hours of saying no. Absolutely saying no. I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do it. No, I'm good. No. I'm... And then he gets the women to give me a spiritual bath. He offers me weed. He offers me drink. So at this time, you know, I'm intoxicated and also I'm on marijuana. So uh, my decision making and my my consciousness is about blurred. And um, then he tells me, you know, and then he gets, like I said, he gets the women, women to love bomb me. So they give me a spiritual bath and it made me feel so happy to be around the women again. I thought when I was visiting that I was going to be with the women, honestly, because Efru was in the in the messages and we me in Efru face like in a relationship. Like, what do you mean, be with them? Like, just you know, talk with them, be with them, like, like you know, catch like up, hang out, like homegirls, yeah. or, or yeah, absolutely, yeah. because Efru and I were in the messages. Remember that she was telling me to come visit. So me and her was just like telling each other how we missed each other. And, you know, basically we FaceTime and we had a great talk. Like I thought I was going to be actually with the women. And I and at any point in time, I can just go to Alihio and just ask him about Pennsylvania. That's what I thought was going to happen. But no, he secluded me from the women when he, when I got there. As soon as I got there, he secluded me from everyone else and basically you know, isolate me. So it was just me, him and Malia. And then Malia leaves and it was just me and him. And all the the whole time he was basically like wooing me and trying to like talk me. Where in. was Solar during this time? Like you came for him, you were talking mm -hmm. to him, you were talking to Efru. He isolates you from Efru and the other girls. Malia's left there. But where was uh, Solar during this whole uh, time? Solar was in Pennsylvania and I told Solar before I went to the home in Atlanta that I was going to go see uh, Nature Boy to ask him because me and Solar had an understanding like I was like uh, we wanted to be with each other actually we really wanted to be with each other so me and Solar had an understanding so I told Solar I was going to go see Nature Boy and when, Nature, when Solar found out about that he was he just said he paused and was like oh, chief wants my girl. And I'm just like, what? No, 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 that's not, that's not happening. Like I told him worst case scenario would be me sleeping with him, which I'm not even thinking about at all. And he's just like, that wouldn't be worst case scenario. And I'm like, what do you mean that wouldn't be worst case scenario? So basically, um, yeah, that's what happened. Like he was in Pennsylvania. I was, um, in Atlanta at the time. And I told him I was gonna go visit to get permission to be with Solar in Pennsylvania. Okay. All yeah. right, so from that moment, they get your inhibitions low. You are under the influence. They give you a spiritual bath. Mm -hmm. After you slept with him, they gave you the spiritual bath? No, before. They yeah. love bomb before, yeah. Okay. So. They give you the spiritual bath. They're kind of like making you feel really good, making you feel like, oh, you know, all these things. And then here comes Nature Boy. You guys sleep together. And then after that, how do you decide to stay? Oh, God. The act was just, it just made me feel so shameful. Um, 
because I I don't even want to talk about it really, but I would say I was I was ashamed, and I felt as if I I hurt Solar in some type of way, um, and it made me feel like I had to stay now because, for one, I thought that um, I was being healed in some type of way. Um, mm -hmm. I'll explain. So. Basically, the women were so nurturing towards me, so loving towards me. Like, I'm telling you, they, they, after the spiritual bath, they made up this bed with, uh, what is it, flowers, petals of flowers on the bed and, you know, um, music on the TV or, you know, and lit, candles lit, I believe. Yeah, it was candles lit as well. So it just made me feel like, I was some kind of princess, like some kind of goddess in the home. So um, I just liked this. In some days, into staying there, me and the women would get close. We would dance together. We they would allow me to wear their clothes. They would treat me like a sister. So it made me feel like at home. It made me feel like wow, that I think things are changed. You know, because Alihio would tell me, "I changed now. Do you see that I changed? I I, I smoke weed now. You know, all this bull crap." Um, so it made me feel like it was changing. The, 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 the scenery changed. It made me feel like I was at home. And I also felt ashamed of myself as well. Um, so I felt, you know, I don't know how to explain this feeling. Like when someone talks you into doing something you don't want to do at all. Peer pressure. And, yeah, peer pressure. Um, and it just you just feel so humiliated and so, you know, fearful and feel so downright bad inside, it made me feel like I was obligated to stay now, if that makes sense. I don't know how to explain it, but it felt like I had something to to do or to prove. I wanted to show the world that, hey, look, I took off my weave. Hey, look, I took off my makeup. Look, I'm natural now. Like I'm eating natural things again. Like I felt good being with the women. So, I, and I also, that's why I stayed. I wanted to teach and preach to the world that look, being here has healed me in a way. That's what I thought, you know. That's what I thought, um, but it, it it went south pretty quickly. Okay, so he wows you, and they kind of make you feel welcome. Did was there any resources did you bring at that time that probably like made them want to wow you even more? Like, did you bring in? income at that time because i know the other times you brought in checks and things like that but the third time when you came was there like an incentive that did you bring that may have made them like oh let's really pamper her or or was it just you just came yourself and they just wanted to to wind you back in yeah it was winding back in definitely um i didn't come with anything uh, when i went back um, the third time, I didn't come with anything at all. And then when I was when I decided to stay, um, basically I went and got all my things from where I was, and um, got all my clothes, got all my drawings, my paintings, everything. You know, my candle making kits, my makeup, everything. All my clothes, I brought it to the home, and I was appointed to be the beautier. If that makes sense, I was. I was appointed to be the one that brings beauty into the culture. And um, basically, uh, I was supposed to help the women. He was basically like, basically turning the women into me a bit, I would say, because they would he would want them to get dressed up more. And I remember he told me to be Malia's servant. So I had to dress her up. But she didn't like when I dressed her up. She wanted to, to dress up on her own. So um, he, he saw a value in me, of course. He saw a value in me uh, because I, when I came, every time I came, I would say that I turned up the wardrobe and uh, I also like brought this natural change into the community. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So from the time that you are, are there, you decide to stay, you go get your stuff. How long before Solar and the rest of the men come back and enter into the home? Um, you know, I don't know. Time didn't exist in um, carbonation. So I kind of just don't know when the men came in. I would say probably a few weeks after. Mm -hmm. um, 
and when I mean time didn't exist, meaning we didn't look at the days or, you know, what was going on in the world or anything, you know, we just existed in our own little world. Um, so I, I'm not really sure when, but I think it was a few weeks after um, the men came and a, a day after the men came, the Alihios thought the women were acting different. So he got jealous and held this whole meeting and said, like, you know, try to degrade the women for getting dressed up. And I kind of found it weird because it's like I got dressed up like every other day or every day damn near. You know, like I, I like to shower. I like to dress up, do what I do. That's what I did in Carbonation. But he tried to make it seem like all the women were trying to, like, appeal to the boys or the men. So, um basically he was trying to kick out kick out all the women or and all the men he was trying to kick out a lot of people unless you know they had something to offer basically to him cuz it was going to be all about him and he basically was saying that um basically he put the the women with the men again after that um and he for the first time allowed me to be with solar by myself that time uh, so all in a all in a nutshell, a lot of other things happened, but all in a nutshell, that's what happened. Okay, so at that point, he allows you and Solar to be together, and how how does that work out? Well, he also allowed uh, the other couples to get together, and then he allowed Zoka to be with Pice, and Zoka was not liking that at all. She actually dropped her, dropped to her knees and was crying out, "Why?" So whenever Alihio puts the women with the men, um, they're together and, until he wants to have sex with the women again. So he would put us together and that me and, and Solar being together, it was it was actually pretty nice for me. You know, we were actually pretty compatible. Um, we got along more than the other people in the in the household, I would say that. And it was part it was pretty cool. Um, but Alihio got in the middle of that as well and tried to tear us apart um, and was just basically saying that um, uh, he deserves something better than me. And of course, here, Solar. Yeah, Solar deserves something better than you? Yeah, I think that's what he was saying to Solar. And Solar was just like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, he tried to split us up and I wasn't trying to let go at the point at that time I was not being manipulated um, because that's who I wanted to be with in the first place. So, but he, um, he split us up at the end of the day just because he wanted to have sex with me. Okay. Yeah. So after he splits you guys up, he separates you and solar again, somewhere between then and, um, there was a video where he kind of like had predicted, he said like, oh, Natiri is going to betray, Natiri and Solar, they're going to be trolling me. They're going to betray me. Um, he had that video where he kind of like, what kind of separate you guys and put you guys as the villain. And then there was a video where he basically rebranded himself as Three God. And so when he rebranded himself as Three God, this was not, um, too long after you left so i'm gonna play a little bit of this video and then we'll go uh from there okay people <sighs> They want me to introduce myself again, my car. You ready? All right, so I'm gonna pause it right there. So on the screen, the closest to me is Janae, correct? That's you with the nose. Um jury? Yeah. Closest, closest to me with the blue. Okay. So let's play it. So Janae's sitting next to him, um, where you can see her closest to where I am. Then from there is Efru, Sheba, Zoka, Malia. And then you have Nature Boy rebranding himself as Three God. Mm -hmm. All due respect. 
What? All due respect to the most high, three God. Whoop! Got my threes in check. I go by the name Three God. Some of you know me prior as Nature Boy. Okay, okay, brother. Um, let's let's start this um interview, man. Uh, <clears throat> let's start this interview. First of all, I would like to ask you, um, where did you get the name, the the title, Three God? Where did that come from, and why are you calling yourself God now? Where did that come from? A three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three. I am three. I am three God. I am from a distant constellation. Are you okay, Janet? I have hijacked the body of this being. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were crying. I, You're right. Okay. <laughs> the girl at the bottom is so comedy. Because <laughs> she is like, what? <laughs> Girl, same, same, <laughs> same. But I just know that it's a performance, but same. I'm at 60% down before I am your God. All of the African American people. Oh my God. Are my people. Are we? I am your God. I'm the three God. I come in three. <laughs> um. All right, so we'll pause it. <laughs> so you were on the side of him, and he was three God at that point. Explain to us what was going on, how, like, what? Um, girl, he was going crazy. Um, and it's sad. I'm I'm laughing because it was funny, but it's sad. He was going Lulu. Like, I, I know you think that's an act, but he really, like, he was trying to make us believe that he was this three God, right? So even behind the scenes, he was portraying yes. the three God? Yes, like it was not just a lights camera action. No, it wasn't that. It was like even behind the scene, he was three God. Like he would, yeah, stomp around like he's three God and just a robe or naked or something like that. Like he was that off camera too. <laughs> so it's, it's sad because he was going Lulu. Um, it was like I was watching him lo lose his mind, basically. Um, he was, he just smoked before that whole ordeal. I remember before that, um, he was getting ready for the Sinetta interview. He was really he, bullying me like really hard. Uh, I was in the corner uh, <laughs> before that, you know, I was in the corner. Um, for 30, 30 minutes or so. But um he he, he put you in the corner. He put me in the corner. He 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 never puts me in the corner. Um I was in the corner for like I, like throughout my duration of carbonation like twice and I put I was put in the closet one time. But yeah, around that time he was bullying me really bad. Um and I had to get ready really quick. Um and all the women was wearing my clothes, so I didn't have really anything to wear, so I had to come up with something. But yeah, that time he was literally three God. And he believed that, you know, and um, he was exposed to the conscious community of the fraud that he is. Um, and shout out to Sinetta and Nepal because Napa was definitely getting his ass, like, excuse my language, but he, she was getting, going in and it literally was breaking my delusion. It was breaking my illusion um, of the whole thing. 
Um, so at that moment, you were kind of believing that he was three God. Well, if he here's the thing, like since he was three God on and off the camera to the women, at least I know that for a fact. I don't know if he goes downstairs and he's a Leo again or whatever like that. But to the women, he was three God and asserting his dominance and power over us all the time. So we had to, and plus he started to every day, like for some time, he would get, have us all listen to Bible verses and put his put together how he's the Messiah, you know, and he would say that his name Elihio was in, in the middle of religion, which is R and N and Elihio in the middle. So he is religion, you know, all this stuff, you know, he would implant in our minds and our brains. And then he had us also rejoicing and worshiping him to worship the music. I remember that one time. So we, we saw him as our Messiah in some type of way, shape or form. So when he transformed to three God, I honestly, um, was seeing him lose his mind when Napa and um, Sinetta was like literally asking him questions and he had no answer for it, you know? So as Napa was getting on him, God as Napa was getting on him, um, I started to twitch, you know? I started to like break free of the spell and the illusion. And I started to see him for who he really was, which was like a baby. He was a baby. He sucked his thumb. He, you know, he like, you know, put, make pretend and believe that he's this ultimate being and, and stomp around the house and slaps his dick in people's face and shit. You know, like it's, well, the women, I guess, like, you know, you know, you mean, I mean, like they would give him, you know, oral or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just that, no, like it just wasn't that anymore. Like after that, after that, I started to see more clear. And like possibly two days after that, that's when I was assaulted and I left. Okay. So next video, he basically is still in character of three God. And it is another stream. I think that he did this stream uh, with, uh, on at a two but i think he did a stream on his own and then he did a stream i think together with sonetta because i remember watching this also so i'm gonna uh pull this up really quickly okay unfortunately she was talking back to me and one of the one of the females kind of slapped her pretty hard um, because she was just out of line. You know, so one of the felines kind of <laughs> smacked her pretty hard in her face, like, you know, and she kind of like, uh, we, I don't know who did it, I forgot. I, in my mind, I thought it was someone that smacked her, or a hand that came out of nowhere and just smacked her face completely. And then I was like, "Whoa, who smacked her?" And she was smacked, and she and then she started talking out of her mouth again, and she said, "Da da da da," and then she got smacked again. And I was like, "Oh, whoa, 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 calm down." And she was like, "I'm sorry." And then <coughs> after that. That you want to leave. <clears throat> we had sex, and then I woke up. And she was gone. She was gone. So yeah, update. All right. So that was Nature Boy describing the event that now has put him behind bars for life, and the assault that he did on you and the traumatic experience that you went through of being assaulted by the women and everything like that. So I know that you relive this moment on the stand. You don't have to if you don't want to, but mm -hmm. if you care to share for the people who did not see your testimony or know exactly what happened that led to him um, getting locked up, if you're comfortable to share um, what happened. Um, I'm honestly not comfortable with sharing um, or just explaining it again. I would say if you do want to know, I've written all that in my book. So if you want to go ahead and get my book and um, know exactly what happened, you can pre-order with me. I'll say okay. that. 
And so if you haven't heard from her also, um, that is a good way to uh, catch up. So she talked about this situation on the stand and she also talked about it in this book. So in the book she has, it's called Lesson Learned and she does have pre-orders available and you pretty much go into uh, details about what happened that night and yeah. everything like that. What else can people look forward to as it pertains to um, the book? Absolutely. So people can look forward to wisdom that I've learned outside of the cult, um, experiences that I've had outside of the cult, um, also our narcissism, you know, shout out to also and domestic violence and, uh, you know, what it means to be codependent in relationships and when a relationship is not good for you, um, all of that, you know. And I also wanted to um, say that cult behavior also, what cults are also, that's described in the book as well. Shout out to uh, Rick Allen Ross that did an amazing job on the stand um, telling about what cults is. And um, Amanda Plancher also um, dive deep into do domestic violence and everything like that. So uh, I would encourage anyone to go ahead and look into that um, and look into those people. And that's basically what's in my book and more. There's a lot more in the book, like a whole lot more in the book. I'm just giving you like little inklets and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Um, you guys can also find her on Instagram. Her IG is in purple at the bottom, Janae.Alexandria. And her book is also on there. And that's how you can um, pre-order it. Now, I think that so many women will support you. And I will also support you on your book journey by donating towards your book <laughs> as well. Um, because I think there's a lot of people, even in the chat right now, there's a lot of people who think that you should be accountable. You know, there's people who feel like, oh, well, you know, um, they don't understand from looking at everything and how things played out. But I think that you have a story to tell. And I think that, I, I mean, from my point of view, I understand. But for those people who don't understand and they feel like, um, you know, she's not being accountable and they want you to take some sort of accountability, what do you say to those type, those people? I would gladly take accountability if you tell me which what I'm not holding myself accountable for. I believe I've taken a whole lot of accountability, especially in therapy. I've been taking therapy for over a year and some change now. And I did a lot of deep healing and work. The work that was required when you get out of domestic violence situation or uh, a cult situation, you know what I'm saying? I've done the work and I am healing continuously. So um, I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. I would love to take. A, I always take accountability for my actions. I. I think I took accountability earlier when I said, you know, I was very naive, you know, and very, you know, you know, out of the loop when it comes down to knowing what to do with men. You know, I. I didn't really grow up with such knowledge. You know, I. I think I could take more accountability if I, if I so choose. But it's not up to them to hold me accountable you know, for what I've done. I feel like I've been holding myself accountable for a lot of things that I've done. And whenever I see fit, I'm going to do that even more. So, yeah. Yeah, I've, I, I look, I view you as a victim. I think that you are a victim, but you know, there are two sides of people who are looking at this play out. And, you know, I keep seeing that across the screen. So I just had to ask, but I feel like you are, and I feel like you're brave. Like I told you, Thank um, you. And things like that. So going. Somebody wanted me to ask you. Mm -hmm. One of my friends texted me. They mm -hmm. said, ask her when you can, if Nature Boy ever had um, hanky panky contact with the men, including them drinking the downloads. And if um, you drunk the downloads. Um, I haven't seen anything. Um, but I will say. Um, Eligio did flirt with the men. Absolutely. Positively. I seen that firsthand. He would say that Jax, he would say, he would look in, in Jack's eyes and, and caress Jax and be like, 
Jax is in love with me. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, man, if that's what you say, that's what you say. He would uh, throw these subliminals um, at the men all the time. You know, um, I knew one time, I know one time that Alihio wanted the men to sleep in his room and just the men. Mm -hmm. Point, but I don't think that ever happened. Um, and what else? Yeah, I just, I was seeing a lot of subliminal behavior and I would catch it because I was able to see it um, spiritually. But anything else, I don't know. I know that after I left, there was a tranny that came through um, that did all the men up and excluding a nature boy. And there was a tranny there when I was there as well um, that came through and he had sex with that tranny. Nalihio looked at tranny porn every night, getting sucked up by Efru. Like it's, 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 it's. It was just known that he loves transsexuals, meaning he likes the booty hole, meaning he likes men. So I mean, we didn't see it that way for some odd reason. We did not like, you know, see, yeah, see him like, you know, looking at 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 non biological women as like a thing. Yes, absolutely. Every night he would go on his, what is those things, the binocular things called? Um, the things, like like a virtual world or something like oh, that. Oh, like a VR headset? Yeah, that thing. And he would use that. Now, now that I see that thing, I don't even want to see it, want another one of those things. But he would use that thing and look up the, the transsexual porn. And he would either, he would get, you know, oral to him viewing that. And that's how he got off his rocks, you know, looking at transsexuals have sex. So it was a thing for him. And he would say to the public all the time, yeah, I like tranny porn, but he didn't get into depths of what he did with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, that's that's what happened. Okay, I'm gonna show this video since I, I brought it up, but um, this was the interview that I did with Solar, but in the, within the interview, um, there was a part of the interaction with the, the men. So I'm going to just share this real quick and then we'll get back to you. Tell what I like. I mean, they, they, they gotta, they gotta be a feminine man. They don't gotta be no, like, I don't want no hit They gotta be, tell me what you like, man. Straight, 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 straight. I'm similar. Like there's a moment in time where I've tried to be bi, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I tried. I tried it, and I figured out. You know, trying to make Chief happy was outshining his wives at the time. I was making like I was getting it to the point where Chief was addressing his wives in a way like, "Look at him and see how he takes care of." Them. They said that y'all bottoms or tops. I'm definitely a top. Top. It means the match. You give it up. Oh, top. Take you it take it up. Up. Booty or you? Nah, top. I ain't know. <laughs> That's you what I was saying up. earlier. That's what I was saying nah. earlier. I was like, nah, I can't. I don't see myself. No, I'm I am not getting booty. <laughs> I ain't getting my. I ain't getting my cheeks drilled like a shit. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I can't get my shit drilled. Nigga. <laughs> nigga said it was straight. <laughs> it was so, straight. Bro, you know what I mean? It was straight, straight. <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> like during that shit. During that like shit, a woman can have two husbands. Here, we never said that. As long as the guy bisexual and he with that, they could they could be together. Right. Support that. That's where y'all hit it. Maybe. How you thought about it? Yeah, I thought about that shit. All right, so I'm gonna pause that. That's inside one of the interviews that I did with uh, Solar. But what it appears is that he, is that your first time seeing that? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I didn't watch the interview with you and Solar. I didn't, so I didn't see that um, before. Oh, okay. Thank you for the uh, donation to Hood Horrors. He uh, donated a couple of times. Okay, so from that, it would appear that he was grooming not only the women, but also grooming the men as well. So. Yeah. What what part of that has your face kind of like dropped? Um, the the gayness <laughs> that he was saying to them at the young age that they were at, you know. Um, I 
I haven't seen that before. And yeah, I feel like he was grooming the men. You know, he would have the men be together all by themselves in another state. And when they came here, they still couldn't get any hanky panky or from women or be with the, the their wives, their actual legal wives, you know? So uh, they were always together. The men was always together. So um, I think that, and also he would preach to the men to be celibate and, and do semen retention. You know, all this stuff, you know. Um, so, I mean, I think that's prone for the men to develop relationships, honestly. Um, yeah, I think that he was grooming them, honestly. Okay, so we'll move on from there. But um, one of my friends wanted me to ask you that. Um, being that uh, we're on topic of the men, um Cause I'll, 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 I'll jump off of nature boy just a little bit. Cause I know it's kind of like heavy to kind of like pal on in that. So uh -huh. we'll kind of segue off of there. And uh, another question that he wanted me to ask you was what is your relationship like now with uh solar? And for the audience who doesn't know solar is her child's father who um, she had a baby with and who, he was the main reason why she went to the group and the uh, guy who she got with after. So, um, I just, I choose not to talk about him, um, but it's just where cordial, um, when I don't talk to him, I don't really talk to him like that. Um, he does his own thing um, and that's it, you know. Is he? In, I know you don't want to talk about him. Just one more last question. You can answer or not answer. Um, is he involved in Azuli's life? No. No. He's not. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's not. All right. And then um, the next question from my friend. He had like a couple of questions he wanted to ask. Um, he wanted to know at the end of the or right before sentencing, you all gave a victim's impact statement and you told about how you felt like he impacted your lives and you gave your statement after mm -hmm. you gave your statement and a couple of other people gave their statement and then Velvet gave her statement. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about Velvet's participation in the trial and her lack of acknowledgement of you? Whew, that's a question right there. Um, all right. So with Velvet participation in a trial, I was very grateful for that um, because, you know, she played a part um, and that's cool. Whether she did it for herself, which is great because, you know, she, she needed to do that for herself. She's been abused by this man forever, you know, and... Um, it helped in my case because, you know, he did do revenge point on her as well. So it showed the pattern of behavior that he has. So I was very grateful that she came forward. Um, and uh, man, that girl wanted to put him underneath the jail. I know that for a fact. Um, the acknowledgement of me being, you know, minimum to none um, is to be expected. Uh, I'm doing my best just to like say, just keep on the question because I could say a whole lot of other things and it can go other other ways, but um, just to be trying to be respectful and just be honest and blunt and real with you that I just, I mean, it's just it's expected from a narcissist. That's all I'm gonna say, you know, it's, it's all about her, you know, and what, you know, if you guys wanna see no accountability, that's what that looks like, not over here. So I would say that. Um, and I'm just saying that as a woman, you know, um, who has been doing her work and um, can be forgiving, but cannot forget, you know, what happened. Um, she is on her own journey. And because a nature boy did a lot of things at a young age with her, she's been groomed very well by nature boy. And uh, she just have a whole lot of accountability to take, you know, uh, for her, you know, but all in all, I'm grateful that she participated in the trial. I'm grateful that, you know, she got her justice because it was just not just for me. I believe it was for a lot of the cult members, ex-cult members as well. And she was one of the main ones 
that needed to get her justice. So, um, and that's what I'm going to say about that. All right. So, um, as far as your child, um, or your beautiful daughter and her son being siblings, do you see in the future, you guys being able to, um, kind of bury the hatchet so that your children can know one another? Or do you think that'll probably take some time? Uh, just to be honest with you, it probably will take some time. And I need to see, honestly, it, I would need to see some true growth. Um, here's the thing, and I, I'm gonna say this because uh, a lot of people have an opinion on um, how I run my life and how I do things, especially with my daughter and the other woman involved. Um, with Velvet, she doesn't believe she did anything wrong. You know, she is yet to say any type of remorseful anything. She doesn't feel remorse for what she did. She thinks that, you know, what she did was justified. Um, and I cannot, but I am- um, What she did as far as what? Um, basically, from my opinion and from my standpoint, um, it just went behind my back and um, dated someone that I was really truly in love with and I came to her about all the time. Uh, she said that I did that to her, which made her do it to me. First of all, first, first of all, um, this was a, her husband was a man that manipulated every situation he placed himself in. Her husband was a cult leader. He knew how to get into the mind of the people that he ran, that he had, he was head over. So this man was in my subconscious mind as well because he would tell the cult members to isolate themselves for 30 to 90 days, which I've done, mm -hmm. and only listen to his voice, only listen to his teachings. So when it comes down to being controlled, I was definitely being controlled by him um so this i would say with her it's just it was crazy how she saw things to me because it I, my intentions were never to hurt her but it was always it was definitely to hurt me um when she did what she did and also to hurt N nature boy of course um but i just feel as if you know and also not even just that, but to lie and say that I was coerced into talking to the people or the police to about nature. Where, where did that, that even come from? You know, that all these things piles up. It's like you can forgive for all these things. But when you start, like, if I take her back into my life, that would make me look like a fool and make me feel like a fool, honestly, because she doesn't have any remorse for anything she's done or said or did to me, you know, especially since I've also apologized to her for um, thinking that I could, you know, wherever I was thinking when I was in the cult, you know? And she's told me like, she don't care about that. She thought that, you know, I should have been queen. That's what she said. She said, oh, and, and to run for queen, you should have been queen. Uh, you were, basically, she was telling me I was more qualified than the other women. She was like, as you should. Um, and then she said, uh, she doesn't care about any of that. She didn't care about my apology, basically. She was brushed out underneath the rug. She just wants to put him underneath the jail, or leave he underneath the jail. So me and her had conversations. I confided in her when I was in Mexico in an, an abusive or toxic relationship with Solar. I confided in her and told her like, how can I get out of it? Because I love him so much, but we're not working. She offered me her home, all that. This is all this was happening. You know, we were friends, we were cool. We were sisters to me. So when she has a two hour phone conversation with Solar when I was in Mexico, I didn't think anything of it because I thought it was just them catching up, you know, uh, but to plot behind my back and then get with him two weeks after I, would, uh, I broke up with him because two weeks after I broke up with him, I found out I was pregnant. So he would, and he was already with her. So to do that, and then when I call her and ask her, because one day he just posts both of them together, you know, and I called her and asked her. Like, what's going on here? Like, why are y'all, like, how'd this happen? Yeah, I was I was trying to see if that was real because I sometimes I think Courtney was like loony in the membrane, you know, sometimes he just does some wack wacko stuff. So 
I called her and she was just laughing about it and telling me, oh, you know, it's what's crazy. It's all in alignment. And I asked her if they were dating. At first, she said no. And then she started laughing and saying that she, you know, she wants to do something with carbon. She wants to make a new carbonation and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, you can, you don't have to do a new carbonation to be on the frequency. Basically, we was having this conversation and I had to ask her three times, three times if she was dating Courtney. So the last time I asked her, I said, okay, let me ask this again because I called you for clarity and I'm just getting confused at this point. Do, are you dating Courtney? Because if you are, I would like to know because I consider you my friend. Those are my words of verbatim. And after that, she goes into a narcissistic rage and yells at me the whole time on the phone saying that I, how um, I'm the last person that needs to tell her who she's dating. Um, uh, I came in between her relationship with Nature Boy, which is not true. I uh, remember this like happened. Did this happen on live? Because I remember seeing this. No, this on live. It didn't happen on live. It happened privately, and after you know, she went to her narcissistic rage and yelled at me, and then let me get a chance to say anything to her. She hangs up on me. I called back because I felt bad. I thought I insulted her. I thought I thought I insulted her by asking if she was with Courtney because. From what she was telling me in Mexico, she didn't like Courtney. Courtney was weird to her. She was saying all these nature boy niggas are weird and he's weird and all this other stuff. So I call her back. She continues to talk smack and say all this stuff and yells at me and hangs up on me again. And two minutes later, posts their picture of him, her and him together saying, checkmate, love wins. It's mine for the taking. So after that, I was just and like- They advertised that on Facebook, Instagram, all over. I remember that day. Everywhere. And I was pregnant at the time. So after that, I just deleted my Instagram. I didn't want to see it. It was, it hurt so bad. It hurt so, it hurt so bad that after that, I went to, I, I, sorry. After that, I went to take ter therapy. After that, I went, and my, uh, the T, Chantel Coleman helped me find a therapist and also Jenny tried to help me but the tea got me my therapist and I was able to heal through therapy because I lost two, not just one person but two two people that I really cared about so it made me feel like I didn't have a friend for real um she she plotted to get with him and then did this whole thing online and how they're thing and happy together and all this other stuff and I, I literally just disconnected from the the social media work world for two months because I wanted to I wanted to keep my baby, I wanted to keep my baby, so I didn't want to be stressed out behind that. But yeah, that's actually what happened, and it just made me feel like for her to be like, oh, she and she slick shaded me in the courtroom, you know, not you know addressing me or nothing like. I don't need to invite her back in my life, regardless if, she, if Azuli has a brother by her or not. I right. definitely you gotta you gotta protect your mental health first, exactly. So. And my child, you know, she's she wasn't a great mother to her child children. The 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 children was calling men daddy and stuff like that. I I apologize. I'm not gonna say much about her, but what I'm going to do is take accountability for my actions for and say that I'm not going. If I allow a woman like that back into my life. First of all, I'm gonna to have to see change regardless, but I can't expect change because narcissists do not change. So that's all I gotta say about that. I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, but I am grateful for her for standing up for herself in the courtroom. That's it. Right, right. Yeah, because I mean it helped both of you guys get justice. So I do agree with that. But I mean, it's so sad because you know, both of you went through the same thing, but it's like there is a real like dislike, you know, like she feels strongly about like, oh, you slept with my man. And then you, you know, feel like I confided in you and it's different, you know. So I understand how you feel about like feeling like you were betrayed because you, you felt like she understood what you went through with Nature Boy exactly. and, and feel, felt like she should know what it is with you and uh, Solar. So. Yeah. Do you think her getting, and I'm not going to stay on her for too long, but do you think it was revenge to get back at you to get with Solar or was it revenge to get back with Nature Boy or they actually had a connection? I think it's all three, honestly, or two. I would say the first two. 
Um, but because the, the third one is a bit iffy. But I would say that um, it was Revenge on Me. Um, I mean, it was honestly, sis, I'm going to just be real with you. It was weird to me. You know what I'm saying? After they got together, she started dressing like me. You know, she started doing the three dots that like I have tattooed on my forehead. Like, it was like weird to me. You know, it made me feel like, you know, she was trying to take my life or take, like, be, be me or something, you know? And I didn't see that until people started telling me that. And I'm just like, why would she want to be me? She's so beautiful. She's so, I I always thought she was beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. in out at, at one point, you know, I thought she was just gorgeous. So why would she want to, like, take what I have and, and become someone like me or something like that? I didn't see that, but other people were just saying that. Um, and uh, I think it was revenge on me. I think it was revenge, definitely revenge on her baby daddy. Um, but I think that also they probably had an attraction to each other. Um, they trauma bonded very well. Um, and they possibly had some kind of thing. Like no one can basically, you know, account for someone else's connection. They only can then, then can tell it. But from what I saw, it was, um, it was definitely manipulation and control, um, on both ends and just using each other, you know, uh, he needed a place to stay. She needed money and a person to use, you know, you know, all this stuff, a person to sex on all this stuff. And it just, their karma just came full circle with each other, her and Solar. So, um, that's what I see. And, uh, you know, I just wish her be healing, yo. I wish her the best and wish her healing because, you know, I, I can understand that we had similarities when it comes down to not having our fathers so much in our lives. Um, and um, we had um, naivety issues. So I want her to, you know, be happy and I want her to be well and I want her to grow and, and actually heal and do the work of healing. Um, however, I don't necessarily need her in my life for that to happen. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can move on from there. But I will ask one last question from the chat. Now they are blowing up the chat saying... Um, you explain the dynamic of how you felt betrayed. She felt betrayed. And then people keep bringing up Zoka. Do you think that when you entered into the relationship with Solar and Zoka, do you feel like you did the same thing that you feel like Velvet did to you? It's a possibility. And that's something I can take accountability for. Um, when me and Solar were... Com- you know, communicating and stuff like that, he would tell me that Zoka was fine with it or Zoka's okay with polygamy, but she wasn't. And I should have seen that. So yeah, I think that that was my karma. <laughs> karma comes around full circuit to everybody, right? So I can take accountability and be like, you know what? Um, karma has smacked my ass with Velvet. And that's it. That's why I'm never going to do that for shit ever again. Um, but when it came down to Zoka as well, I saw and also in the cult that she was very confused on what to do. Um, they would hold meetings with Solar and um, Zoka with Eligio and Zoka would be the one complaining about how immature he was and he didn't, she didn't like him and all this other things. So that's the back end people didn't see, you know, um, they was actually going through a lot of torture in their own relationship. So I thought that I could be the one to, you know, do it right, you know, and, you know, have her take a break, be free from the relationship. Let me take it at it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I thought. But at the end of the day, it's me taking accountability um, as the woman, the other woman, I guess, or the second wife, because I was definitely with them and me wanting to just, you know, be with Solar. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I have accountability for that. Absolutely. Okay. So um, going back to, um, I think, Nature Boy. Um, hold on. Well, there was a question. And I'm not going to ask nothing too crazy, but let me see. Okay. <laughs> How did you feel about the sentence? Um, I don't feel like, let's see, I don't feel like um, I have emotions whenever I think about it sometimes. But when I see um, other people 
happy about it, it makes me feel like, okay, justice was served. I feel like justice was served, honestly, but um, honestly, you know what I'm saying? Like, no one wants to- Convicted about it or? I, no one ever wants to see someone get imprisoned for life because me being mentally imprisoned, it made me feel like, whoa, but I feel like it's just deserved for everything that he's done, especially to me and all the other victims. I think it's deserved. And God knows what God is doing when he did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing else to say. You know, um, a lot of people feel as if it was unfair and unjust, but he got a lot of fair treatment in that in that courtroom, from my my opinion. You know, so justice was served. Mm -hmm. And then as far as justice being served, um, there's a lot of people who or it possibly uh, people feeling unfair to it or whatever. Mm hmm. There's a lot of people, and I think you posted um, on your story, there was a woman who wrote you and she was mad at you for the sentence and was like calling you evil. Have you been getting like a lot of hate mail? Oh yeah, I mean, but it's expected, you know? Um, he had a lot of supporters and followers that, can you give me one second? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me check what y'all saying in the chat. They asking where the mods at in the chat. I've seen a couple of my mods. Are they not? I see S Shark in the chat. They not get handling the trolls or what? I mean, everybody's not going to agree. So I don't want, you know, I just want people that are disrespectful, you know? Like if people just have a difference of opinion, that's fine. Just people who are disrespectful, people who are trolling. Other than that, people can have a difference of opinion as long as they are, are respectful. Um. But if there is a question that you want me to ask her, put Q in the front and then um, put your question. But I'm not going to ask anything invasive like that. I feel like oh, that's a little too, you know, too invasive. I'm not going to ask anything disrespectful. Um, so within reason, put Q first and then write your question. But. Be very respectful within that because I want her to know that this is a safe place and I want her to feel like um, it's a safe place as well. So oh hey beautiful, she's so cute. Thank you. Perfect blend. <laughs> You guys made a beautiful baby. Hi, cutie. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. She's so beautiful. Yeah, this is Azuli Rose, everyone. It's my daughter. Yes. She is um so beautiful. Okay, so this is her twin. I mean his twin. <laughs> her dad's twin. <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'm i going to allow them to ask questions. I'm not going to put anything on the screen that's disrespectful, though. So I'm going to try to filter them while mm -hmm. asking, uh, because I want you to feel like this is a safe place, you know? Yeah. And I don't, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I know I probably I probably did ask you some uncomfortable things, but, you know. Yeah, I, I did. Though. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, so somebody said, um, ask how she feels about them teaching the uh, breaking of generational curses, but somehow couldn't avoid them. Isn't this disappointing? It's disappointing, man. Um, because we were just following behind the teachings and knowledge of Alethea Bishop and thinking that if we follow behind him, he would lead us into some kind of nirvana where we don't have to, you know, worry about what our parents did or we wouldn't perpetuate what our parents or generations before us did. It was, but we actually ended up, you know, so. Um, it's disappointing. I'll say it's disappointing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right. So someone, where did that comment go? Oh, there we go. Um, someone says, if Janae did become queen, does she think the cult may have went in a positive direction? Um, that's the whole point of me wanting to be wanting to be the queen at that point. I wanted to take the cult in the whole nother direction. It had nothing to do with any feelings I may have had for Alihio or Stockholm, I'll call it that, or um any may believe jealousy that the women are saying that happened. I literally wanted to take the cult and transform it into a, a better thing because I saw him going down this rabbit hole, a hole of Babylon things, you know, um, Babylonian things where he would, he stopped preaching and teaching about the nature message. And I thought that if I became queen, he would listen to me because we would talk, me and him would talk a lot. And, um, you know, he, he saw the influence that I had in the cult. So I thought I can change things around. Honestly, I thought it, I can make it better. I, I honestly did. Okay. And when you guys put your question, make sure to put Q in the front. Um, someone says, what religion were you prior to nature boy? I was Christian. Okay. Uh, well, I wasn't christened the second time, you know, you know, when you go and get baptized or whatever like that. But uh, I was in the church before I left the church and found Nature Boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she was Christian. I got to filter through these before I put them on the screen. Okay. Hmm. I don't know about this question, but... Oh, all right. uh, somebody said, why did you say he was faking it? Um, I was assaulted as a child. And I never said anything like that. Excuse me. They said, why did you say he was faking it? He didn't, you didn't say he was faking our word. You said he was faking it, but they put, why did, why did you say he was faking our word? And then they said, I was assaulted as a child. I never said anything like that. Um, it just when I said that, it was like basically saying that I felt like the emotion wasn't there, it wasn't real. Like he, what he was like saying to me before prior, like sweet talking me and trying to woo me and you know all this other stuff while I'm continuously saying no. You know, um, I honestly don't have to address it because it, that's just a weird question. Yeah, you don't have to answer anything that it doesn't make sense to address it, but. Um, Somebody said, what made you believe he had knowledge? Where was the tangible proof? Well, his charismatic energy, you know, like the way he spoke and preached. Um, also, she's like, I want to play. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and yeah, she definitely went to play. How he spoke and preached about nature. He had also developed a curriculum. If anyone remembered the five sciences, he had the MODs, the three Cs, three Ps. It was like, school you know so it was very believable that he had knowledge and wisdom you know and um the when you practice and the the integrity and you practice being honest and pure and of love you just feel light you know so that's what i was on and that's what um he was just preaching so that's what made it believable to me you know um i don't know how else to say it <laughs> okay um, someone says, how are you continuing to protect your mental and continue healing? Well, uh, stop reading the comments is one of them <laughs> because uh, literally um, a lot of people just really just don't know me and they, they, they think that they do um, and they want to judge my actions and say, hold myself accountable for all these things while they have their own lives to look at. And um, I, I definitely am looking at mine. I'm, I am doing better now. So it's just to keep my mental sanity, I just stop thinking or trying to, you know, impress or whatever. People please, whatever. I just, you know, figure that people are just going to have to get to know me on their own accord instead of having these judgments about me that they have nothing, they know nothing of. So uh, that's, one of the, that's one of them, I will say. Okay. Um, someone says, my question is, she really ready to walk in her full potential by walking with Christ? Are you saying, am I going back Christian? I think so. 
Oh, um, I choose not to answer that. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm getting into religion right now. Okay. Another person says, do you see yourself getting married again and having more kids? Absolutely. You were married before? Married again? Oh, no, I wasn't married. Uh, okay. I said married again, so I'm like, did I miss a marriage? Yeah, I um, I do see myself getting married, oh. and I am very much in love. And like I said, I'm going to shout that person out. I love you. Thank you so much for taking care of me and being a real man. Um, where I know God is doing whatever God is doing for us to come together one day, but I'm just going to say that like I'm very much happy where I'm at. So that's it. <laughs> All right. Someone says, um, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Not in this space. <laughs> Not in this space. I see myself. Um, actually, I want to keep that sacred. I'm going to see. I'm going to keep that sacred because some people don't know how to handle someone's vision. They try to cast stones on their vision and be like, oh, we don't see you like that. So I'm going to keep that sacred for the people that um, I actually care about and want to see me in that light. So, yeah, I'm going to say that. Uh, someone says, how are you coping with parenting with everything that you've been through? <sighs> you just got to do it. You just got to do it. Like, there's no if, ands, or buts with having baby Azuli. Like, you're going to have to just get up. And it doesn't matter if you're feeling like you're sad or depressed today. She needs milk. She needs pampers. She needs her diaper change. Like, they, I just get up and do it. Like, I know how to work. I'm a very hard worker. So that's how I handle it. You know, I can, and I have therapy and I have friends and a support system and I have a family that, you know, talk to me and help me out. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone says, uh, do you believe Solar is redeemable and would you like him to have a relationship in the future with um, you? Uh, no comment. All right. Somebody said, Shanae, you are beautiful and strong. Good Janae thanks. So pretty. Um, <laughs> okay. You, some, somebody keeps asking, like, what will the wives do next? She's not one of the wives, so I don't know why she would have the answer to that. Um, so, yeah, that, that person <laughs> keeps putting that in the chat. Um, she she's not one of them. Uh, someone says, uh, "Have you ever tried celibacy?" I'm actually celibate right now. Um, I haven't had um, intercourse in a year and five months now. I believe a year and five months. Yeah, so I I'm still continuing until I get married. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, someone says, what was the hardest thing you had to admit to yourself? That I was wrong. That's going to be the hardest for anyone that you were wrong and okay. wrongs that you, you led yourself down a path that you necessarily didn't have to go and to tarnish yourself in so many ways. I had to say, I can't point the finger at anyone. I just had to point it back on myself and be like, well, I did this to myself, even though I am a victim in certain types of ways, I don't feel like victimizing myself would help my situation get better. So I just take accountability, you know? So I had to admit that I was wrong and just do my best to be right <laughs> next time with God, you know, right with God. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone says, no question. Love you, Janae. Oh, love you too. Thank you so much. I appreciate the love. <laughs> Let me see. Because I'm filtering through these girls. Thank you. Because I don't know. It's okay. It's all right. People's going to think whatever they want. Um, uh, I think this is kind of similar to the last question, but they said, what do you think the future holds? I think that's kind of similar to the last one. Sacred. Um, oh, this is a good question. Uh, what would you say to the other victims out there who may be too afraid to speak up and stand up for themselves, as well as those who may not even fully know it happened? It's okay. You know, take your time. I would say like, it's okay. We we will speak for you. 
we got it for you. That's why I would say some people don't have the strength to do what a lot of us is doing. And that's perfectly fine. Whenever they do get the strength, you know, they will take their journey into wherever they feel like they're going to take it. Um, but it's okay. We got you. Okay. Someone says, Janae, after everything you've been through, you are a soldier and that you, you heal from this and focus on your future and your child. So they were just giving you like, you know, words of encouragement. Thank you. Um, someone says, would the book be available on Apple Books for download? Um, for right now, I want people to get the the printed copy because I actually want them to pick up a book and read. <laughs> Honestly, that's the only reason why, because we can get so distracted with our phones. And um, I don't want you to cheat that way. So for right now, it is available for print only. But I'll see how it, the, the, the pre-sales go and how the book does and, you know, decide on putting it out for Apple Books or eBooks later on. Okay. Um, next question. When did you begin to write your book and what sparked you to do so? Um, I've been wanting to, okay, let not me be wanting to. I feel like God has been like telling me to write a book for years now for years now and um i i was inspired by chanel cooper sykes my my old mentor um because she wrote a book and changed her life so um i thought that you know i had to write a book of some sort but i didn't know where to start um so after some time and i and i actually go into this in my book as well lesson learned i go into when i started to write my book i was told by my ancestors to write the book um, I had my altar was up one day with the candle lit and everything. And I just felt my ancestors all around me screaming at me, telling me to write. And that kind of scared me to the point where I had to start writing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I felt as if it's going to help not only myself and my own generations, but other people as well. So that's what inspired me the most was knowing that I was going to help someone else. And how long did it take you to write the book? Three years. Okay. Um, next question. It says, uh, how did you feel seeing him in court? Who? Uh, Alihio? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer that. I felt... <laughs> I don't know. Someone says, at what point during the cult journey did you begin to think this is a major mistake? What point during the cold journey did I believe it was a major mistake? Um, um, there was many times, very much, many, many, many times. And I also go in depth in my book um, about one of these times uh, is when he started to make me like um, expose my secrets for spiritual evolution that was one of the you know one of the turning points for me um he was doing it to humiliate me but i but say that it was for my spiritual growth so that was one of the turning points for me and i go deeper in lesson learned okay, make sure y'all go to her ig get those pre-orders and everything like that um i'm gonna ask her a few more questions and her baby is very active i want her to tend to her beautiful girl i don't want to hold her up too much oh you know i'm talking about you huh look how she look back hi she's like oh you talk about me you talk about me <laughs> yes <laughs> she's magical <laughs> she's so cute as soon as i said that she looked back like huh you talking about me okay <laughs> you know i'm talking about you pretty girl <laughs> All right. Um, someone says, thanks for sharing your story and your bravery. Does baby love tummy time? She's so strong and beautiful like her mama. Thank you. Um, yeah, she's getting used to tummy time now because she's eight months now. So she's getting stronger. Thank you. Okay. Um, a person says, are you getting child support? It's coming from God. I'll tell you that. All right. Another person says, how has your sister supported you? Oh, man. You know, she's been my rock in, in many occasions. She's been like 
talking to me on the side, you know, just making sure I'm okay. You know, she, she, she definitely been that type of support to me. Like just sometimes you just need to talk it out. You need to talk it out with someone. And before I had a therapist, my sister would talk to me, my friend, Jen Ye, shout out to her T the, the T shout out to them. They would, my sisters, they would talk to me a lot. So my sister Janelle, yeah. And also she would make me like, you know, like this right here is a evil eye jewelry. It would help me feel like I'm protected because she would put all the beautiful intentions and prayer into it. Like, yeah, she's definitely, and this right here, also this bracelet, like she's definitely helped me, you know. Was she there with you um, at the trial? No, but she was uh, watching Azuli sometimes. Yeah, she would, she said to me that she would want to be there with me, but she didn't want Azuli to be there with all that energy and stuff. So she would watch Azuli for me. Oh, okay. That was nice. Yeah. Um, someone says, what is the wildest thing that you've seen there? And then I'll probably ask like two more things and I'll let you go because I want you to be, I don't want to hold you up too long. I appreciate that. Um, the, the two most wildest things. Yeah. What's the wildest thing you've seen there? What's the wildest thing? I, I Honestly, love, I've seen so much. I don't even know what's the wildest thing. Honestly, I go look into the book. There's a lot in there that I've seen that you'll be, oh, let me know. I, I, I figured it out. <laughs> Watching Elihio Bishop whip, whip Malia, Tanisha DeLay over 50 to 100 times, over possibly 100 times with a belt and he orders her to go into the shower and get wet for one second, tells her to get back out, lay fat, flat on her face again, and continuously whipped her while she was naked and wet. That was the wildest thing I've ever seen. I froze. I didn't know what, I didn't, no one knew what to do but to watch because she was ordered also to kiss our feet and tell us she's sorry. And so, trigger warning. Witnessing that, and I don't, I don't want to have to keep going back so much. But were you thinking about that kind of situation when he told you that that's what you would have to in turn do? What do you mean? When he said that, you know, when before you left, I believed on the testimony, you said that he said that you were going to have to kiss Malia's feet. Oh, kiss Malia's feet. Yeah. Like um, he, you were going to be the slave and you were going to have to kiss her feet that's something that you said in your testimony yeah that's that's um i mean was that I, something that you were thinking about was my question i at that moment no um but i could have went back to that i didn't though i didn't think about that moment because I, I blocked it out when you're in carbonation you block out abuse like mm -hmm. there's no way someone like saying can stay there unless you just you know no one was saying but <laughs> like block out the abuse like wipe it from your memory while you're there like it didn't happen and um yeah that's a trauma response as well so i just i didn't really think about it after that until i left and remembered like oh yeah that happened and broke down in tears all right um someone says how did you find so much strength to get out of the coat uh brainwashing how to i had a child you know, um, when I got out of the cult, I was still kind of in the cult-like behavior because y'all see me get with Solar and y'all see me go to Mexico and isolate myself from my family and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But after I got pregnant with Azuli, um, I, it, it was time to change. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really do it for myself. I did it for my child because I didn't want her to go through what I went through, the pain that I went through and the manipulation I went through. I feel as if I if I don't change, she might pick up any, on any of my behaviors and naivety. And I didn't want to be naive with her. So I had to change for my daughter. Also for myself, but for more my daughter. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much um, for coming up. I know Zuli's ready to... <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so I don't want to hold you up. There's so many... Um, questions in the chat that they're going through. um the one that keeps reoccurring the most um if you want to mm -hmm. answer if not this is the last one but mm -hmm. some people were confused about saying that you guys were making love 
And how did you go from saying that you made love to um, understanding and realizing that it wasn't love and it was our word? So if you feel comfortable, answer. If not, thank you for coming. I honestly don't want to answer that, Neek, because it's like there's a video out there explaining that. If you want to know what that video is, you can hit up the T. Um, but I don't need to explain it 50,000, hundred times. You know, I, have, I also explained it in my testimony. So if they don't want to believe what I said, that's on them. But I know what's real, you know. Right. Thank you so much. I know she's getting fussy, so I'm going to let you go. I think you're beautiful, Azuli. Hi. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. Hi. Yes, I'm talking to you, Azuli. Hi. Hey, pretty. <laughs> Hi. But okay, I don't I don't want to I don't want to get her too fussy. So I want to say, you know, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Like I told you before, um I think that you are strong. Thank I you. think that you did what needed to be done and I think by your bravery you freed so many people. There are so many people who were locked in bondage underneath carbonation that were free. I've seen so many people give reactions that were in the cult, like um, Pice, Kite, um, people who left way before you had entered at that moment. And so many people feel vindication. So I just want to say that you're brave, you're strong, and you freed a lot of people, including yourself. Now go ahead and take care of that baby girl. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. You probably want the bottle or the booby. I don't know which one. I wish uh, I'm gonna let a couple of people. Ooh, I'm gonna let a couple of people come up. If you are in the chat and you want to answer anything, you can. But um, after that, then I'll wrap it. But thank you so much. Um, make sure that you guys pre-order her book. Her Instagram is on the screen. It is in purple, Janae.Alexandria. If you guys want to donate to her, she has her cash app on the screen as well. Let me take the banner off. Her um her cash app is Natiri Janae. Or wait, is there? Yes. It's Natiri Janae for now. Yes. Okay, so her cash app is Natiri Janae. If anybody wants to <laughs> journey, donate to her on her journey, that is her cash app. Um, you Despite the trolls that you will see in the comment section, you got a lot of support, okay? Thank and, you. And, you know, what comes with something like this, there's going to be negative and positive. Focus on the positive, and, you know, that'll be that. Thank you so much, y'all. I'm going to go now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Janae. Bye. All right. She got to tend to her beautiful baby girl. Um, I'm going to let some of y'all come up. Just a few people, let y'all come up. Y'all let me know um, any encouraging words you want to say to her, anything that you guys want to say. I'm going to let probably like one, two people up, and then we're going to be out. Um, let's see. Yeah, there was a lot of out-of-pocket comments in the chat that I didn't even... I didn't even uh, read. <laughs> I didn't even read. Let me see what y'all saying. If if nobody wants to come up, then we will uh, be. Out. Thank you so much, KD. KD said good interview. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks to Janae for coming on. We appreciate her so much. Um, let's see. Thank you, Jazzy. Jazzy says a uh, great interview as usual. Um, Tanel, hey Tanel. Hey, how are you, Nick? Hey, was there any uh thing that you wanted to say? Yes, really quickly, just thank you. The way you have covered this story, the way you 
have conducted these interviews, you have just been phenomenal. And I used to be satisfied to catch, you know, when I catch and I see after things happen, but I've had to catch the lives because the way you've been working and editing and, and conducting these girls, just thank you. And uh, just to, to Janae, I appreciate you sharing your story. I appreciate you sharing your strength and you just keep growing in the direction that you're growing. You you don't know what you've done for so many people. The people who have such negative things to say about you, many of them don't want to face their own traumas. They are stagnant in their own pain and they've accepted it as it is what it needs to be. And so when somebody stands up and says, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. I don't have to accept this. And I'm going to speak about it and I'm not going to be afraid to do it. People who want to remain in that and want to keep you in that, they hate it. They hate to see you growing. So let them hate it. Let them keep hating. You keep growing. You keep raising that beautiful baby. And anybody in reading these things in the chat and who feels like, oh, I can't speak out about things that have happened to me or, oh, I can't grow past a toxic situation that I'm in in this moment because people are going to say X, Y, Z. F them. Let them say it. They're going to say it because they're too afraid to grow. Don't let their fear stop you. Thank you, Janae, for not letting fear or any past mistakes stop you from speaking your truth because you said something true. Accountability is for you to take for yourself, not for people to tell you what you need to be accountable for. They need to check their own stuff. So that's all I wanted to say. Meek, thank you. You're such a beautiful yeah. life. Just yeah, keep just doing it. Every time that you come up, and I'm sure Janae will receive your kind words because they are real. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't top up on, I don't just thank you. Thank you. Cause <laughs> you make me want to have to say these things. Cause I feel like so many people need to hear it. And there's so many negative things that can fly through, um, that people might focus on, especially when you have things that you might feel bad about in your life, but don't let those negative words, uh, sit in your spirit. Don't let them do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanel. Last right, part. Have a good night. Thank you. Be out. Um, hey, Ratchet. Today, he said he didn't change his name. Ciao. Hey. hey. How are you? Good. Hey, Neek. Hi, Boo. Hi. How you? Been? Um, that turn was. Back on. Huh? I said, turn your camera back on. Oh, cause I ain't situated. I was sitting down. Um. You look like you out of breath and everything. Is there anything <laughs> you want any words of encouragement or anything yeah. you want to say to Janae? I really do. Um, of course, I wanted to come up here and say I miss you. Good to see you and catch you live and be able to come up here. But just thank you for this interview. It was very amazing for me. It was the best interview of 2024 so far. Keep up the great work. Um, it was very informative. Um, things that I didn't think would be the way they were. And I'm um, just listening to her experience and seeing her have a safe space. I love that, you know, and um, I think that she's so strong. Janae, you're very strong, very beautiful, um, very intelligent. You know, whatever things that you learned, you can use it for good. A lot of things was already in you. Um, your destiny is your next destination. You know, that baby is so beautiful. Um, regardless of whatever circumstances and um to hell with nature boy i'll never forget that tape i'm gonna leave it alone i'm gonna leave it alone you know what tape i'm talking about neek i don't know what tape what tape i don't think they talked about in court with that white doctor on that uh oh the first the early beginnings before honey before the bag before the brains before the cult mm-hmm and it started a trend. More people started getting life sentences. You better watch out how y'all keep treating black women and trying to manipulate women, all women, manipulating women and, 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 and brainwashing them and doing all of that, trying to humiliate them and hold them down and break their wings so they can't fly. That's exactly what's coming to more, y'all. As soon, black fathers, husbands, and black women lovers are going to have a jail for you soon. So um, I really did love it. Um, it was heartbreaking at a lot of times, but I believe every word that she say, because it's her truth and it's her story and her journey. And she wears it so beautifully. And um, you shouldn't have to go through all that stuff to have a strong testimony. But when it do happen, I just love to see a black woman triumph. And so I love it. Thank you, Neek. Thank you.
Um, so you have a new a new page. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yes. All right, so someone on the screen they said, Neek, did you ever post Efru's testimony and anyone else that testified besides the ones that's posted? And no, I did not post her testimony. My plan was before they did sentencing, I didn't know that they were going to do sentencing and all of it on the same day. So I was like, you know, the buildup of sentencing to see what he sentenced, I was going to put out all of the rest of the testimonies that I did not. But if you guys, even though I feel like, shoot, case closed, book done, cleared. Um, if you guys still want those testimonies, like Efru's, I think I didn't put up Jack's testimony. And um, who else? I think I think the only ones I missed was uh, Janae's on the first day because I had to like edit it. But now that it's over, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I didn't I didn't do Janae's. I didn't do Jack's. And I think that's the only two that I missed. If you guys still want those, mm -hmm. y'all still want me to post those, I can. But I thought that. That child was over it, so I was like, uh, "I ain't gonna waste my time." But if y'all well, want, you're the coverage queen. If y'all want those, I can. Um, you say y'all still want to see it? Okay, I'll I'll post them. I'll post we them. You want to see everything you do? You've always been the coverage queen in my eyes. Um, you always on top of real stories that are at the pulse of the culture. Already, somebody said I want to see it. I thought y'all seen it already. No. Um. But okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. You added, remember when I? Remember when I drugged that one Dusty over here? <laughs> I'll never forget it, y'all. Anybody in the chat remember I came up here and drugged that Dusty in that court? That's that same court that girl came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Added, added tutu? Did I say right? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I haven't been up here since the Meg the Stallion thing with you. So, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, I was kind of late, but... I wanted to ask if you knew or anybody knew, is she able to get child support off of her baby father? Is that um, I think she said that she's receiving anything she gets from God. I think that was her answer. Okay. And then I also think I want to talk to like, I guess the rude people, because uh, it's, it's cool to, or important for people to share their stories. However, it's okay if you don't necessarily agree with what's going on or like, all the people saying it could never be me, or how could she put herself in this situation? And blase, blase. You fine, Yusuf. Go ahead. There, how do I say it nicely? Sometimes people, I guess I'm trying to say, just take a lesson from it. Like you don't have to bash people, but just try to take a lesson from what you can learn from it. And I think the lesson here is one: like always have yourself fulfilled. Like when you're empty like that you you'll kind of grab onto anything that catches your eye so like try and have your self-love self-respect um i was in class the other day and we were talking about how some people are so like the beehive or like the swifties or people who are so addicted to celebrity krishan rock like no matter what they do they're always Nicki minaj they're always going to be on their side that that's that cult like you're whatever you're getting from that person they're filling you up even though that person doesn't know you personally and i mean in this situation she didn't know this person personally. So I guess if everybody could just, cause I was reading some of the comments. I'm like, dang, you don't have to be yeah, this disrespectful. Cool. Like, I'll try not to even go there with some of the comments. Yeah. But okay. That's all I have According to say. To Solar, he, however, I did speak to Solar since the verdict and Solar would say that he has sent, um, thousands and thousands of dollars. He's, he would say that, he supports his baby. And so that's kind of like what he told me. But she says that he's not really present. So that's that. <sighs> okay. Well, have a great night. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Thank you. Right. You're so Thank amazing. You. Nice to meet you. You um, got a channel? Oh, I wanted to start. I just want to finish school first. So if you want to okay. follow me, go ahead and follow me right now. Okay. Things ready for y'all, but I just am so preoccupied with classes. So yeah, it's yeah. gonna be awesome. All right, thank you, Boo. Thank you for coming up. All right, uh, Yusuf, close us out. Tell yes. Close us out. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Neek. Yes, it's been a while. Shout out to the Night Owls. Yes, I took down the Ratchet Today Show. I'm now the Celebrity and in Crime Intergalactic News Galaxy. I know it's a long name, but I'm trying to lay low. And um, it's celebrity spelled with an S. 
You know, uh, we cover a lot of different stories, entertainment and crime and politics. Um, but other than that, love yourselves, you know, stop looking for somebody. Don't look for nobody outside of you to validate who you are. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like it sounds so cliche, but it's so true. You know what I'm saying? And like the uh, caller before me said, like she said, you know, there's a lot of people looking for something and looking for somebody when it's really something inside of them that's broken, you know, and people prey on that brokenness. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these types of predators, it starts off with controlling you and isolating you, um, talking down to you, trying to break your spirit. You know what I'm saying? These dusties are real. Don't ever let a dusty get, get, get you off into the wilderness somewhere, you know, and I don't make those women dumb either. And make them doing exactly what y'all want them to do. Trust in the leadership of a black man. And so a black man also lead a black woman to a better situation and to a better place. If you're going to be a leader, lead her somewhere better. Why would you lead her in the cult? Why would you lead her in some demonic stuff? And other men, why would you join in on that? And not even just with that. It's a lot of this stuff going around, but it's not officially a cult. But it's still a way that people are thinking and behaving and taking social cues from. Don't be Shanquilla Robinson and them friends. Don't be uh, Mahogany Jacksons and them types of friends. Sitting around watching the abuse, possibly participating in it, letting that demonic spirit get off on you. Sexing all these demons. Getting STDs, sexually transmitted. All right, all right, all right, all right. Too many trigger words. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Damn, I'm still cussing too much. Yeah, we we gonna close. Damn on me. That note. Thank you can't you. say nothing on YouTube. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you to Yusuf for coming on. Thank you to everybody who was watching. Shout out to Janae. Um, I just wish her so much positivity and. Um, on her journey, I think, like I told her, I feel like she's brave. I feel like she's strong. And I feel like she did what needed to be done. Um, a lot of people are supporting her and there are equally as much that are mad at her. But I feel like at the end of the day, look how much each person flourished that left. You know what I mean? Like there was so many people that was a part of the uh, cult. And when you see them in those videos, they look lost. Their eyes look glossed over. They look sunken. Their bodies was like shells of themselves. Like they kind of were like robots. And you see how they have like so many of them have flourished. There was a video that the T had posted and it was of Kite and Pice. And they both were talking about how they felt about the verdict and everything like that. And you see the reaction from, even though, you know, Musa has been accused of being similar, you know, you see his reaction and you see so many people like Solar and so many people like True and so many people who have left and how they eat, they just look livelier. They look fuller. They look like, like more full of life and things like that. So be mad at her all you want. She freed a lot of people from, torment and abuse and i will close out on that note somebody in the chat asked me would i talk to the three remaining women that's there um i wouldn't mind talking to them honestly i just don't know how fruitful that conversation would be um but i wouldn't mind talking to them but i mean i feel like it would be i don't know how fruitful that would be but i wouldn't mind talking to them so um I'll leave that there and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I did have a conversation with Solar. Um, also, I might I might upload it. I might not. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But I did have a conversation with Solar. And in the conversation that I had with Solar, he says that um, he's doing all the, you know, he's he's extended himself and he's done so much this and that, whatever. So. Um, I might or may not, you know, or I might just set up like an actual interview with Solar. I, I, I'll figure out which which way to go. But um, I'll catch y'all on the next one. And I will. Uh, somebody said, is Zoka not there anymore? Zoka's in jail right now. So, yeah, I'll talk to y'all later.